Uh, what you're going to see in this workout today is you're going to see I worked up on some uh, trap bar deadlifts, a bar that was uh, sent to us by Chris Duffin. I taught you how to keep tight, how to keep your back flat, how to maintain position during the deadlift. I also showed you a couple easy assist assistance exercises that can help improve your deadlift. In addition to that, I showed you a great exercise, which I think is a uh, kind of a best kept secret of the gym on what to do for your lower back, how to pump a lot of blood in your lower back. Thank you guys so much for following along. trap bar thing uh, from our boy Chris Duffin uh, I just got done with a podcast um, with uh, Ted Neiman basically taught us a lot about protein leveraging really really cool interesting podcast you guys should listen to it Mark Bell's power project um, it's interesting a lot of people are talking about carbs a lot of people are talking about fat but then there's protein which is kind of right down the middle that people don't talk much about and it's Ted's belief and many other people's belief now that protein shouldn't even count uh, towards uh, being counted towards your calorie count and I, I'm in full agreement with that protein is a, a building block and it's something that is not no, under normal circumstances utilized for energy fat is utilized for energy and so are carbohydrates so what Ted said was you know, a 200 pound person should eat about 200 grams of protein. If they're a hungrier person and they want to overeat on something, it would be protein. <clears throat> they would take an additional 200 grams and they would split it up over carbs and fat in whatever fashion that they wanted to. So you got 200 grams of protein. And if you wanted to stick on the side of carbs because you want to kind of bodybuild, strength train, whatever just keep in mind this is like beginning recommendations right you can do what you want with it so now you have a, an additional 200 grams of energy let's just say that you wanted to be more keto well you would put almost all those grams towards fat and only sprinkle a little bit in for carbohydrates and in those carbohydrates you could have vegetables you could also have uh, some forms of fruits and berries and things like that but you're still keeping the carbohydrate intake, you know, below 25 for the day or something like that. Uh, his, and his other recommendation was even if you do keto, he didn't think it was a good idea to go zero carb. And I'm in agreement with that. However, with the caveat of saying that doing things for periods of time is totally fine. So if you want to do like really, really low amounts of fat for a few days, I think that's okay. But it's just for a few days. You want to do really low amounts of even protein for a few days. I think that's, uh, that's okay. Um, anyway, to get back to what I was talking about, so on a keto style diet, you would have a very small amount of carbohydrate and you would have 150 or 175 grams of fat. And then if you uh, take the same equation that he threw out there for someone that weighs 200 pounds, they got 200 grams of protein. Now we're going to leverage the carbohydrate and fat intake and let's dump in more energy towards the carbohydrates and let's uh, have 150 grams of carbohydrates a day and about 50 grams of fat. Now 50 grams of fat's a little low. You might wanna be a little higher than that, but you guys get the picture. You can pick, you can choose whatever lane you wanna be in to be healthy. I know that I'm someone that promotes a ketogenic style diet. It's a diet that I believe in, it's a diet that I like. However, you can pick and choose whatever way you wanna do it. However, you're gonna to have to move around. The protein's gonna stay stagnant and your fat and your carbohydrates can be the two things that are going to be interchangeable. You want to run off of carbs, increase the carbs, lower the fat. If you want to run off of fat, do the reverse of that. Increase the fat calories and lower the carbohydrates. Am I making any sense, anybody? Are we on page 43? I sure hope so. Anyway, getting some of these uh, trap bar deadlifts in 
uh, today. This is a bar that Chris Duffin sent out to us. I'm gonna use the fatter grip for as many sets as I can, and I might switch to the thinner handle and, uh, and try to just kind of see what I could do. Really looking for sets of five to six reps for today. Um, I'm only just, I'm just going until it starts to feel like that. I'm just going until I'm pushing enough and I'm gonna feel some pushback from it, but not a tremendous amount of pushback. I just want a little bit of negative feedback, just a uh, small deviation of me having perfect form on these. And I'm gonna ride that out for probably two sets in a row. And then I'm gonna probably move on to something else. Keeping it short, keeping it simple today. The hardest part for me is to get in position. Uh, I just saw a video the other day. I, I get a lot of good feedback from the videos that we produce here and not just feedback from you guys, but feedback to myself on, you know, where my strength has been at or where my form and technique has been at, where my flaws, or where my weaknesses are. I can see it when I go back and watch some of these tapes. And I did a 705 deadlift when Pete Rubish was with us a few years ago. And man, I just, I really locked that form and technique in real well. I did a good job of getting my hips low, but I really have a hard time uh, getting my hips low enough on a lot of these movements. I just kind of like, I'm more comfortable staying in here. So I kind of stay in this range a lot. I do the best I can, but I got something I really got to work on. Um, whenever you're deadlifting, we, no matter what style of deadlift that you're doing, the uh, goals are, are the goals are similar, whether you're doing a sumo deadlift, whether you're doing a trap bar deadlift, doesn't matter the style of deadlift. We want to keep some of these, uh, I'm going to step over here so you can hear me better. I'll face this way, like this. Uh, the form and technique is going to be the same. We want to keep our stomach tight. So how do you keep the stomach tight? Keep the stomach tight by hitting yourself in the stomach. Just take your hand and give yourself a couple whacks like you're trying to uh, absorb an impact. And picture that it's... Uh, one of your siblings or one of your buddies who's going to come up and just, you know, you're one of your buddies, they walk by and they try to mess with you and they just kind of flick you in the gut or punch you in the gut when you're a kid. That's what you're bracing yourself for. Brace yourself, get your stomach tight. A little bit more information on that is you might want to try to do some nasal breathing, bring in a lot of air through your nose, and then we're going to cap it off and we're going to close it off. I used to do this uh, quite a bit on squats. Back when I was squatting big weights, squatted up to 1,080 pounds at one point. When I was squatting those big weights, a lot of times I would just take a lot of air into my nose and I'd cap everything off with a huge breath of air uh, into the lungs. Sometimes it got a little tricky because the weights were so heavy that sometimes I just had to do, you know, breathe through the mouth. But here's what it'll look like. So I'm gonna put my hands here because I want to expand my hands and I want to actually push outward and downward with my stomach. So it's not really just about pushing your stomach out this way, but you want to push out right through here as well, right through your obliques. You want to flex them really hard. And if I was wearing a belt, this would be very conducive to wearing a belt because a belt doesn't necessarily protect your back, but it does protect your back if you know how to use a belt properly and you know how to expand your stomach and push your stomach into the belt. We call it breathing into the belt. So what I'm gonna do right now, I, without having a belt on, I'm just put my hands here, I'm gonna breathe into the belt, so, or breathe into my hands. Even if you don't choose to use a belt, it's still important and it's very crucial that you still utilize these breathing techniques. So I'm gonna take a nice deep breath in through the nose. And when I cap it off, I close everything down and I push the stomach out really hard. And what I'm trying to make sure that I'm not doing I'm trying to make sure that I'm not just inhaling into the chest. And that's part of the reason why we're not just going because <gasps> I don't really want a bunch of air right here necessarily. I want the pressure to come through the stomach because I'm trying to stabilize my core. So again, and then once I get that air locked in, I'm kind of almost, I feel like I'm pushing downward through my feet. I know it's a weird thing to go over, but it is very, very important. So getting that air and really just get that air whatever way you can. I like to do it through the nose first and then cap it off through the mouth, but you can do whatever way you prefer. If you prefer getting your air through your, through your um, lungs, through your mouth, you can do that as well. Because sometimes it's hard to, you, we don't always get to pick and choose the way that we do stuff because we're all built so differently. Now, the other thing we want to do is we want to try to keep the back flat. Luckily for me, I've been training my back long enough to where it doesn't really round much anymore. So 
stomach's tight. We want the back flat. Okay, now we get into position. And we want our, um, our hips to be lower than our shoulders. We want our hips to be lower than our shoulders. So what that looks like is we're just, we're here like this. I know it sounds easy, hips lower than the shoulders, but a lot of times what's gonna happen is as you go to lift the weight, you're gonna end up here. And your hips are gonna raise up and your shoulders are gonna be lower and lower and you're gonna be like glued to the ground and you're gonna be lifting like that, like this. And that's not very safe, okay? That's gonna be too much pressure in the lower back. Stomach is tight, hips are lower than the shoulders. We want that back flat and then everybody knows Rule number four, you guys should know this. We went over this, we've been over this for years. Rule number four is don't shit yourself. You gotta be really careful of that. It's, ha it's happened to me a couple, like more than one. So that's just between you and whoever's watching this. But that is an important rule, right? So we got the fatter grip, we have a different bar, but all the rules of deadlifting are still the same. Stomach's tight. We want the back flat, getting the hips lower than the shoulders. Don't poop yourself. And really accelerate and push through the floor. As you go to extend upward, you're gonna really treat this like a leg press and push your legs through the, through the, through the ground. I'm gonna breathe right here with my legs straight. See the legs are straight? I'm gonna get my air right here. Toe cramp. Oh, there we go. I personally like to lift a lot earlier in the morning than this, but just the way it kind of worked out on this day when I was going over my game plan for what I was going to do today, it didn't make sense for me to rush myself off to sleep last night um, and then try to haul ass in here in the morning. Whenever I plan and schedule morning workouts, they're planned two or three days ahead. Um, I'm a big believer in that uh, the impacts, that, that the things that happen to you and the things that happen on a given day, they will manifest themselves two or three days later, sometimes four days later, five days later. So if you had like a night of drinking, you might not feel that bad the next day to get through your workout, but then the next day at work sucks. If you had a shitty, uh, shitty day of eating, it might not show up on your body for two or three days. All of a sudden you're flat, you're fat, you're not feeling yourself anymore. So when it comes to those kinds of things, I like to plan things out just a little bit more in advance. I don't like to plan, you know, working out super early in the morning, the, the, the night beforehand. That'd be like two nights beforehand. It'll be at like, you know, 4 p.m. A lot of times it's even just after a workout. So I might work out 4 a.m. Monday morning. And then uh, if I remember a little bit uh, after the workout, I'll text everybody and say, hey, I'll see you guys at 4 a.m. on Wednesday. So I try to do it in advance. That way I have the whole day to prep and I already know mentally, physically, my body is on board and knows exactly what's gonna happen. Way in, way in advance. That way I can't make as many excuses and bitch about stuff. I got it. Now I got it. This is the advantage of this bar. It's got this little handy dandy thing built into it. You go like this. And now it's up like that. Now we're going to take this. Work it right on the side. Bam. Got those weights on there. Now we're going to go like this. Bing. Might get a little tricky with these fat handles. Well, there's some chubby, chubby handles. And uh, I'm a product person. We're always in product development mode. So these are some new sleeves we've been working on. I mean, you guys, I shouldn't even really tell you because 
you're not going to be able to be prepared for what's coming in 2020 anyway no matter what i warn you of but we're flying out of the gates hard in 2020 designing some different types of belts designing some different types of briefs i was going to throw these on today but i forgot to wear underwear so that wouldn't be a safe bet would it wouldn't want to have to expose all of you to all that business but this is kind of a strongman style belt. You might have seen some of the world's strongest man athletes wear something similar. This one's a little bit big for me, and it's just a prototype. But we test things out rigorously around here. This feels pretty good. I can already feel a bunch of different areas where we can prove it. But this is a really good start. I've worn this one before. Um, needs a little bit more uh, Velcro attachment here. and kind of a bunch of stuff we'll shoot a separate video i'll talk to you guys about product development some other time i don't want to be too distracted from my lifting i get, I get really excited about developing products some heavy ass weight been between 225 and 230 pounds in the morning a lot lighter than I've been in many many years and what I've learned from that is that it sucks <laughs> when you weigh less uh, you'll notice that in order to continue to weigh less you got to eat less kind of goes against my do more be more <laughs> mentality um so things like this get to be tough especially after fasting um, throughout most of the day but i said i was gonna do two hard sets of six so there's one one hard set uh, i get asked a lot how attached to the weights i am and i'm not i'm not attached to them when i was lifting big boy weights years ago i always knew there was another 45 pound plate with my name on it. There's always another 100 pound plate with my name on it. There was always another two and a half with my name on it. Even a one pound plate with my name on it. And you know, you just, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with where my strength is right now. Somebody might think, I think this is like, it's probably like 400 pounds or something like that due to the, how heavy the bar is and stuff. But uh, somebody might think, well, how could you be happy lifting 405 for six when you, probably done 600 for six or four well i just have different goals and different things going on at this point in my life so um just you're in different stages it's not an excuse um but many of my other areas of fitness that used to be really weak are really strong now i'm in really good condition i'm in really good shape i would like to uh, improve that and uh Kind of the last thing that I have to improve, which you guys will probably be following along forever on, is I'm going to have to at some point improve my mobility. It has gotten better with being healthier. Um, it has gotten better with uh, doing some work on it, but, it, you know, I'm just not that consistent with it. And that's, that's definitely a weakness of mine. If I was to point one out to you, that would be, I don't. Um, however, I have been implementing stretching in just at my house. I'll do little things like... While I'm watching TV, boom, I'll put a foot up here and I'll try to move around in different positions, hold it for a little bit. That might not look like much of a stretch for you, but my stuff's wound up pretty tight. So I have been incorporating it into my regular day-to-day uh, -day lifestyle, but admittedly, I gotta do uh, a lot more. Gonna go with this weight again. I wore this belt as kind of a tryout. I'm gonna throw on a stronger belt, a strong belt. To give me a little bit more support it was rare for me to wear a 3x belt but i was once uh that or when i line up here at the bottom there yeah yeah i was once at that point 
So yeah, I went through all these different sizes of belts uh, over the years. And with this belt, I think I was, uh, I think it was still a little bit big on me. But with this belt, I remember specifically, I remember like throwing on a pair of like squat briefs during my training session and going to like lock this into place and being like, oh my God, I have to use the fat guy belt. I have to go to the 3X belt. And now, you know, if you look, that's a 2X, this is an XL. This is my bread and butter. This is the one that I made the uh, belt boner famous off of just because as I kept losing weight, I ended up with a bigger and bigger boner, which my wife can attest to. But yeah, I ended up with a bigger boner as I went along. And then now we're way down to here way down to this large belt but I promise you guys I won't go down to a medium belt and then rib for your pleasure we got the fatness counter here this means that you're you know getting close to diabetes and death when you're at the 10 you know you kind of judge it like the reason why I actually did put the numbers there you know kind of all kidding aside was just because I realized as a lifter I wanted the belt in a certain spot for a squat. I wanted the belt in a certain spot for a deadlift and in a certain spot for benching. So now the belt boner is much shorter. Womp womp. Now it's disappointing, but um, I'm trying to get myself, I'm trying to get myself to be dead center in the middle of this one. That's a good goal for me as I continue to lean out and be less fat. Let's see where we can get to. So really just have about one more hole to go that's pretty tight though that's like a little a little on the uncomfortable side throw a little bit more chalk here one more rip Move around like you're old, and move around like you're already uh, like you're already in pain. <laughs> Save yourself from getting an injury. So, if I take a play off, I can get hurt. Taking a play off is this, being like this, right? We don't want to do that. Take your time. Many of you have had, have had back injuries before. Pretend your back already hurts when you look at the weight. You're gonna develop a strategy because you're like, my back kind of hurts. I better get over the weight, and get down in here a little bit more, bring the weight out here, and then maybe I don't even pick it up. Maybe I just roll it to where it needs to go to. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. Pretend you're hurt already. If I had the ability to like lean on something as I was grabbing something, I would I would do it until I got in position. And I get in position. Pull that weight away. Every inch the weight is away from you becomes exponentially that much heavier. So you want to try to get almost over top of it and position it right here. I didn't. I felt zero pain in my back doing that. Been lifting for 30 years. Now, here's what gets to be iffy. As soon as this thing gets away from me, now if it's like over here and I gotta try to figure out how to pick it up. Like, what can I pick it up with? I can only pick it up with my lower back, right? I got this 55 pounds just turned into 155 pounds because I'm so far away from it. So I'd want to stand over top of it and grab it. You take play off, so you're gonna get hurt. That right there, this. That's taking a playoff too. You can't let the weight go flat like that. Look at this. It's a fucking disaster. Who can pick that up besides someone who's like 20 years old? It's impossible. You got to use your foot to flip it up. You got to get sumo stance. Bam, kick it way out wide. Turn it. Same principles apply. Get nice and low with it. I can teach you guys everything.
I'm gonna show you guys something. Top secret. I don't take people behind this curtain very often, but behind this curtain uh, lies a lot, of, a lot of hard work, many, many years of developing products, many headaches, many aches and pains. And this all started in my garage. And now it's turning into all this over here. Rows and rows of slang shots. Rows and rows of knee sleeves. Rows and rows of wrist wraps. Knee wraps. A lot of different ways to mummify yourself. But it's just whatever way you got to get your training done. This area right here, we had a lot of stuff go out already. There was probably about 50 of these stocked full of packages. You can see how full those are. And this is kind of our overstock area. We have some other products in here. We carry belts. We make a little bit of everything. <coughs> um, it's really cool for me to have everything under one roof because when I was a kid, my dad had his income tax practice right here. And then he made a dividing wall out of some uh, sheetrock and we had our gym right there. So it was business and weights in the same exact spot. So what's been inside my head forever? Business and weights. Now we got business and weights, right? And if you think about your own children, what's the example that you're setting for them? What are, what are the things that they're seeing on a daily basis? You uh, get upset because you feel like your kid eats too much junk food or you get upset because your kid is on their phone too much on the internet too much or playing video games too much what are they seeing what's the influence what's there things around them you know if there is if there's a lot of junk food and not a lot of good choices for healthier foods they're not going to gravitate towards that i realize that kids will want to do their own thing and to have things their own way i got two of my own but my children even though I've been teaching them about fitness for a long time. And even though there's some resistance, sometimes they are, they still lean towards eating a lot healthier than your average kid, just because they don't have a choice. Just because everything is right there around them. So think about your own surroundings and what do you want to surround yourself with? What do you want to surround other people with? What do you want to surround your kids with? it off try to practice some nasal breathing as I was going through that I felt a little bit of oxygen debt just meaning I had I felt like I needed to gasp for air in a safe fashion Fight through that the best you can. Return to your nasal breathing. Try to calm everything down. Just took this hectic situation of lifting like this, getting my heart rate to go whoosh, flying through the ceiling, right? Calm it all down. You got to be like a quarterback in your training. Throw a, go to throw an out pattern. And you're trying to pick up that first down. It goes the other way for a pick six. The other team intercepts it. And they score points off their defense, right? They sco score points off of your mistake. A good quarterback's not going to get mad about that. They're just going to they're going to calm themselves down, get themselves more composed, and they're going to come back better and stronger than ever. Same thing on something like this. You lose your composure a little bit because you went a little crazy on a set. You want to try to return to your breath. You want to try to deliver the next set as strong or stronger 
in the first set. I like to try to come back on that second set and be a little stronger, move with a little bit more vigor. Um, but a lot of it starts with your breathing. Get that breathing intact, get your uh, recovery done. The more that you, the more that you get used to being uncomfortable, the easier it's going to be for you to recover from your set. So it's just a practice I'm using today, but a lot of times I'll just breathe normally when I'm training. But I'll also practice some nasal breathing. So that, that way when I do hard conditioning stuff, I know how to deal with it better. I know how to recover from it a little bit faster, a little bit better. You have no idea what I'm talking about. If I'm not explaining this uh, very good, then you can look up Patrick McEwen. Patrick McEwen, he's hard to understand because he's, uh, he's Scottish, I believe. Maybe he's Irish, maybe now he's mad at me, but I think he's Scottish. And uh, his accent is a little bit hard to deal with, but man, he knows a lot about this style of breathing. And look, man, if you can implement something just into your training, like while you're working out, why not do it? So you just saw me do the walks. Now I'm starting to take a little bit too much rest. But that little walk, that little exercise of nasal breathing, it's done in collaboration, in combination with what I'm doing. I don't have to go outside of this and go and do something special for it. Uh, you guys have also seen the video. I'll direct you towards my video on nasal breathing. Click over here. Uh, I did a whole video talking about it. But again, I'm not an expert on a lot of these things, so I don't, I'm not gonna spit a bunch of science to you and try to share a bunch of crazy information. All I do know is what works and what feels good to me. This is something I've been practicing, something I've been doing, and it's been very effective. I also use Salmonex strips for sleep. It's just a uh, mouth tape. Sounds crazy to tape your mouth shut. It's been extremely effective for me. You can check out their Instagram. It's just at Salmonex. Or you can also uh, look them up. They have some YouTube videos. Patrick McEwen uh, talks quite a bit about taping your mouth shut. Uh, Mike Mutzel as well. Mike Mutzel is a great resource. Anytime I start talking about anything weird, Mike Mutzel is your guy. Whether it's fasting, cold therapy, doesn't matter really what it is. The more out there it is, the more it's uh, in Mike Mutzel's court than it is with mine. Here we go, another set here. Again, I was teaching you to really try to peel the weights off the ground. I can rip these weights off the ground a little faster and things like that, but I'm trying to really pull the weight. If you rip the weight and you're not an expert at ripping the weight, you're gonna rip yourself right out of position. So pull, pull yourself into position and then pull the weight off the ground very deliberately. And for me on these higher reps, I'm trying to work some of these muscles I got over here. So I'm not really trying to be super fast. on that last one there got myself a little bit more compromising of a position but I mean as long as you don't you feel like you're gonna cause any bodily harm to yourself you're good to go I could easily at any time just abandon it and breathe in and out of my mouth but <clears throat> it's I just trying to make you aware of the fact that it, it gets really really tough but if you can get through it, it'll get easier every single time. And the same thing happens on your walks. Try to practice some nasal breathing on your walks. Try to practice some nasal breathing even when you're uh, scrolling through Instagram because you're probably all tight and probably, you know, having some FOMO, or missing out on what your friends are doing or uh, missing out on this person having this thing and you don't have it. Or, or even you're just responding to a text and you're kind of mad about it. You got a tendency to be like, you know, breathing all tight, keep breathing all tight. Um, our thoughts can become our actions. Our actions can become our thoughts, whatever way you want to think about it, but they are heavily intertwined. It makes a big difference in your day to day. Last set, best set. Gonna crank this belt on a little bit. Give myself a little pressure. What I like about this style of belt is that you can see my, my stomach moving with it. Leather belt, won't be able to move my stomach quite as much. But because the leather belt's so much stiffer, it's gonna give you more support. This is more gentle support. This is more like I gotta figure out how to use my own 
muscles to get through it. Doing a little bit of hammy work right here. This is just a simple uh, leg curl, one leg at a time type of thing. Um, I normally go with a lot more weight than this right here, but even though I already did deadlifted for the day, I always like to do what I like. To, I always like to do what I call a garbage set. A garbage set is just to kind of like see how everything's firing, see how everything's feeling for the day. If I just came over here just because I'm warm from deadlifting and I just start out with a weight that I might normally use on here, I could hurt myself. So I'm gonna to try to see where I stand for today. Garbage set. Doesn't feel like there's much reason for it, but it's a necessity. No reason to spend too much time on this. Did a few reps, feels good. Hop on the other side. I can also think about what kind of weight I want to put on here. Feels like I could pretty easily use about 50 more pounds, so I'll throw a quarter on each side. We'll go with that. When it comes to a movement like this, there's no reason for us to sit over here forever, so once we get going, we're going to get going. So what I'll do here, do about five reps, four to five reps. Once the four to five reps are completed on one side, I'll go right to the other. Might rest an additional 20, 30 seconds just to have a little bit of a break. So if you don't have any break at all, you'll actually get very, very sore. And I wanna induce enough uh, aggravation to the muscle tissue to induce hypertrophy, to induce muscle growth. But I wanna stimulate not annihilate that was said by the famous lee haney two three four five deliberate moving with a purpose trying to build the muscle deliberate movement Those of you guys that are watching, that are young, that are maybe playing football, trying out some wrestling, do these movements smooth and controlled. There's no reason to utilize these movements in the gym as explosive until you one day become a veteran at these things and you can start to move into that. But just because you're an athlete doesn't mean you come over here and do this as fast as possible. That's for a more advanced athlete. That's for once you've been training for a while. In the meantime, slow and steady is gonna win the race. Three, four. Trying to hold at the top, slow descent, last rep. Bada bing, bada boom. Slow, deliberate. Controlled movement. I've never ever gotten hurt in the gym from doing a slow controlled movement with a moderate weight. Until today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when I have had an injury, I can trace it back to some form of, you know, pushing the envelope a little too hard, uh, trying to maybe do a weight that I wasn't quite ready or prepared for, yeah. <laughs> overtraining, trying to be too explosive, that kind of stuff.
on that same note, you know, a, a uh, chronic, chronic pain and a chronic nagging injury will be something that has more likelihood to take you out of the game than a standard muscle tear. And uh, that chronic nagging pain happens from lifting too often, lifting too heavy, neglecting another muscle group. It's like, why am I sitting here doing these leg curls, right? Preparing my hamstrings for squats, preparing my hamstrings for deadlifts. When I go to do a deadlift, I don't want that hamstring to pop. I don't want that hamstring to give me any negative feedback. It's gonna train it properly right here, get the movement down. Plus, it's kind of nice to get those muscles working the right way, get them flexing, get some good blood flow in there. I'm gonna move away from that into another exercise. I think I'm gonna do some 45 degree back raises, work the lower back a little bit. Easy to practice nasal breathing in between supplemental exercises. They're not that difficult. Um, 45 degree back raise is gonna work the hamstrings, gonna work my butt, gonna work my lower back, gonna work them all in conjunction all together. And uh, huge fan of these. This is, this is probably, let me think here for a second. If you have an injured back, this exercise right here is one of the best exercises that you can utilize in the gym. If you have a hurt lower back, a 45 degree back raise is gonna be the, one of the best movements that you can do in the entire gym. It's gonna allow us to get a lot of blood flow into the area, into the, lower black, into the lower back, and into the butt, and into the hamstrings. A lot of times your lower back doesn't necessarily hurt because there's some sort of issue with your actual lower back. A lot of times it's hip dysfunction. And a lot of times you're just having a hard time getting enough blood pumping through that area because whenever we go to the gym, we're working our biceps, our triceps, our shoulders. We're not really tapping into the lower back. But if we get aggressive on here, we start to do reps of 10, 20, 30. We can start to work the lower back in a way that it was meant to be worked, which is in a higher rep range because the lower back is full of muscles that uh, have a lot of stamina because your lower back needs to stabilize your weight all day. So if we get on here and we do some of these movements, raise your up a notch. How do you know how high to put this or how low to put this? I, I wouldn't want it so my knee is directly on it because I would hyperextend my knee. It would push my knee back too hard, too aggressively. So I wanna go just to right where it's kind of more on my quads. If for some reason this is bothering you and this is too, still too hard, you put a sweatshirt over top of it or an elbow sleeve or whatever you have to try to mitigate uh, some of how that feels if it's too uncomfortable on your legs. Now, it gets to be really difficult right away because as soon as we extend out, now it's just, I have my entire upper body way up here. So to protect my back, I'm gonna flex my butt. So if, I just, if I'm just out here in no man's land and my butt is not squeezed. This is actually kind of hard to hold this position right away. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tighten up my butt before I ever been doing anything. So I just force my hips. See how I did that? Force my hips forward. Can I get a hay now? Hips are forward, hips are locked in. And now I'm right here like this. Range of motion, whatever you're comfortable doing. You're comfortable in here, that's great. You're comfortable going all the way down. That's cool. You're comfortable curling up. That's cool. No rules on this. You can do them whatever way you want. But, well, there is one rule. Just don't go above a pain level of three on a scale of one to 10. <sighs> Hamstrings are pretty fatigued from doing the leg curls already. So that got me pretty, that got me pretty drained right away. We can use a little bit of weight if we feel like we need a little bit of weight. There's a bunch of ways we can do that. Um, some people like to use bands on this exercise too. You, 
you can make this as difficult as you want. You can, you can hold these sandbags. You can put one of those sandbags right behind your head if you want. I mean, you can make this really, really challenging. I know Pete Rubish and some others who have really just massive deadlifts, they've done this a bunch of different ways with big weights behind their back, um, weight on their shoulders, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, that's not really a movement that would be great for someone with a hurt back. That's a progressive movement that you only do when you're a pro. So now we got a little bit of weight in our hands. It's just 10 pounds. Same thing, drive the hips forward, flex the butt. And we're gonna keep the weight up high. If we have the weight down here, it's uh, not that challenging, but it's still an extra weight. But if we want it to be a little more challenging, hold it up by your chest. If you want it to be harder, you can try to get it behind your head. Is killing my ass. So this is a great lower back exercise for any of you that really struggle with lower back pain. You could superset this with some planks. That'd be a great way to do it. Um, see if my that's okay. See if my fat little body can get down and do a plank. When you do a plank, I think if you're going to take the time to get down on the ground and do them, then you may as well do a side plank as well. I'm miserable at those, really bad at those. Regular plank, I'm gonna go in here like this. You can do these a bunch of different ways. I see some people do them, their hips real high. Some people keep their feet real close together. They point their toes towards the ground a lot. You can see I'm shaking because I suck at these really bad. Great movement for me to work on. And then you can do a side plank. <clears throat> you can do them with your feet side by side like I got them here. Or you can do them stacked up. We just want to try to push the hip even with the shoulder. Now we're going to flip to the other side. If it's bothering your elbow, you can have a sleeve on or you could just Put a yoga mat down or ab mat, flexing my stomach as hard as I can. I'm trying to really stabilize through here. And hopefully it leads to something down there. I don't know. Oh. Mixing that in, lower back movement, great way to help stabilize that spine. Great way to ensure that you have a good, strong, healthy back for your squats, for your deadlifts, and just for your day-to-day -day life. Ooh, the hamstrings are burning. Whew. Hamstrings will burn a lot on this because we went from doing a contracted shorter movement, the single leg leg curl, it's like a bicep curl. We're shortening up the muscle a lot. And yes, it's lengthening, but it's shortening up and flexing a lot like that starts to fill up and expand with blood. Now we're bending from the waist and we're trying to ask the fascia and we're trying to ask the muscle to now open back up again. And uh, hamstrings are probably a little tight from standing and sitting throughout most of the day. It's now they're asked to do something kind of hard. Plus they got a lot of blood into them. And so they're feeling like, they're feeling like I've been stretching them for 20 minutes. So what it feels like when I've only done two sets of this. My last set right here. It's amazing how challenging a workout can be on a muscle group when you are doing primary movements. This actually reminds me of the discussion today about protein. We said that when you go and eat a lot of protein and you get after eating a lot of protein, all the supplemental stuff matters less. It ends up being fluff. It ends up being just a little bit of enjoyment or a little bit of extra on top of what you already eat. Same thing here. We had our major exercise of the day, 
our main exercise, our main event for the day was that Chris Duffin uh, hex bar deadlift thing that we did. Trap bar deadlift, right? We did that, we got a lot of bang for our buck. We did lower repetitions. We did the same movement, a little higher repetitions. And once I did leg curl, once I came to here, I'm done, because I got almost everything done on that platform with those deadlifts. This is just a little bit of touch-up stuff. This is just a little bit of fluff. So if you were to think about it diet-wise, the uh, trap bar deadlift was the meat. The trap bar deadlift was the steak and potatoes and the smaller stuff I'm doing over here. This might be uh, the salad. This might be the, uh, the maybe uh, late night snack that you have that you maybe you shouldn't have. But anyway, I think you get the picture, right? That's all I got for today. Not gonna do anything else. Um, it's 3:30 ish. I'm uh, I'm heading on out of here today. Like I mentioned, I'm having some dinner with my mama. Um, my mom uh, has not been in the greatest of health, and I really want to try to help her. I want to try to assist her. Um, I think probably dating back about six years ago or seven years ago, she fell and she kind of tweaked her knee and her hip and she's been in pain ever since then. And then unfortunately, through that pain, she ended up with a walker. Um, and it's been many years now that she's been on that walker. And as you guys know, you know, use it or lose it, right? Once you stop using stuff, the wheels come off. And uh, even though I am the people's coach and even though I, stand before you and I have the power project and I have all these other missions. My mom hears all these things all the time. It's still hard um, to sit down with a family member and to try to be upfront and honest with them without being cruel and with saying, hey, look, I think you need to make changes. And I feel that these changes are gonna really be helpful and useful to you. With my mom, it's been hard because she did lose weight a while back and she kept the weight off for a little bit, but it didn't seem to really help her that much but it certainly didn't hurt her right having more weight on you and being heavier is never going to be of great benefit and so um you know being better and doing better is just always going to lead to better results uh when you think about nutrition as a whole and we think about you know grass-fed beef and organic this and better is almost always going to be better i mean sometimes we are sold a bag of goods that uh may not be accurate it might just be a particular sales pitch but better is better you do the best that you can and nothing less and so for my mom it's going to be a conversation of look i love you you mean the world to me i want to try to make a positive impact on your life and how can i assist that and so the goal i'm not going to film my intervention with my mom obviously um, but my goal with my mom is to kind of let it be her idea let let it come from her heart and here, like, I just wanna hear from her what she thinks will be useful. I think that she's gonna reference her knee a lot, say her knee, her knee, and that's, um, that's to excuse her from her behavior of, uh, you know, following a, what I would call a crappy diet, you know, because I still see her eating some junk here and there. Uh, I believe she's diabetic, but she's very private. I'm sure a lot of you uh, have similar problems in your household with your family members, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your whatever, or maybe it's just a good friend of yours. But, you know, something I learned over the years, almost losing two brothers. My oldest brother lost him to a drug and alcohol addiction, and then almost lost my brother, Chris. Um, the thing is, is like, man, talking about it is hard, but not talking about it is a lot worse. 
you know when they when they come to when they come to collect on the bill that you uh, accumulate for not accepting responsibility and for not attacking the situation I don't want to be around for that because that's going to be way nastier than just having the conversation and it doesn't matter if it's at work it doesn't matter if it's a friend it doesn't matter if it's your wife if if you have a problem with what they're doing you need to communicate with them you need to tell them you need to say hey I don't like when you do that it hurts my feelings or I was really disappointed when you did just say it <laughs> just get it off your chest it's hard I'm 42 about to be 43 and the only reason I know that is because I still don't have these conversations because I hate them. I absolutely hate them. I love everything about business except for having the hard conversations. But if you want to be great and you want to advance in this world and you want to have the best possible life that you possibly can, the only way to do it is to communicate with people the right way. And that means that you got to step up to the plate and have the hard conversations when they need to be had. It will show others around you that you're way stronger than they ever thought that you could be. Uh, recently, I just posted uh, a video about, you know, how no one's going to believe in you. That's true to a certain extent. But when you start doing stuff like this and you start knocking stuff out of the park in a very direct manner and you show people how much you actually care about them and how much their life means to you and how badly you want to help enhance their life, uh, people will believe in you. They'll, they'll have a lot of faith in you. And on top of that, you're going to gain a lot of faith and a lot of self-respect for yourself. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please comment down below. Uh, feeling very, uh, feeling very grateful. Uh, the fact that you guys have been commenting on these videos, the fact that you guys have been sharing. One guy said he he doesn't like steroids. He doesn't like keto. But I like that. I like you know I like like that's cool. Just you know share with me whatever your thoughts are. They could be negative towards me. Um, they could be whatever. Uh, as long as it's not negative just in a hateful way. I mean, I, I could care less to see those, right? But if you have constructive criticism of something that we're doing, or if you just want to see us do something different, you know, let me know. I, I'm here to do that. Uh, I spend about a quarter of my day, uh, or maybe like a tenth of my day, serving myself in the morning. Um, just trying to flood myself with good ideas, cool ideas. Not servicing myself, not like that serving myself with good ideas, good content, good information. Um, and then the rest of my day is spent for you guys, spent for my family, spent for making better products for Slingshot, providing more for the Slingshot family and Super Training Gym. Strength is never weakness, weakness never strength. Catch y'all later.